Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining class. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. All of you had a good weekend. Yes, no. Yes, ma'am. Had a good weekend. Okay. I think Adin is having a lot of uh, internet connectivity issues. Yes, Adin. It's a couple of times she's going and coming. Okay. Uh, today. Mm, you know, uh, Karan, can you pray for uh, uh, class today? Or oh, you still have a lot of noise in the background? Okay, Kiran, can you pray for us today? Yeah, ma'am, sure. Please pray for the prince, uh, his uh, cousin, brother, who is, I think, a small baby, uh, passed away. So pray for him and the family. Uh, pray for God's peace. And also, uh, uh, Dave said he will not be able to join class because uh, he's in the hospital with his uh, brother-in-law, who is unwell. Okay, so you can pray for the uh, prince and the family and pray for Dave's brother-in-law for good health and strength. Okay, ma'am. We'll pray. Father God, we come before your throne once again, Father God. Father God, we want to say thanking you, Father God, to all your all your blessing and all things, Father God. Thanking you. Once again, we are just submitting your hand, Father God, all students, Father God. You're blessed to uh, Prince, Father God, and their family, Father God. The family lost the loved one, Father God. You just bless and give peace and comfort over there, Father God, that they can uh, receive and heal totally. You heal them, Father God, and cover them through your blood, Father God. And uh, once again, you just bless to a uh, new thing, Father God, in their life, Father God. They receive new double portion. You just give blessing to over there, Father God, the family, Father God. You bless and give and, uh, peace and comfort. You just uh, give that family, Father God, entire family. You just bless them, Father God. And also we are just praying once again, Father God, that they, Father God, he said he in the hospital, Father God, you just gave you a uh, presence over there, Father God, whatever thing it, it was, Father God, you completely heal over there, Father God, you give you completely healing, Father God, has uh, recovered, Father God, the, the post and Father God, what the they gave the request, Father God, we know, Father God, uh, uh, one or more than one gather together your name for the God. your presence is there father god we believe you we trust you we glorify your name father god we want to just say thanking you father god you're receiving uh, you hearing our prayers father god thanking you father god thanking you thanking you father god thanking you and thanking you the class father god you give wisdom and knowledge to everyone father god and whatever thing uh selena ma'am will uh teach us father god today we we can understand father god and apply to your kingdom work thanking you father god almighty jesus name we pray amen mm -hmm. thank you kiran uh is my voice still echoing now or is it okay it is okay ma'am is it clear or uh, is it clear? Okay. Thank you. Oh, so Adin says that it's raining uh, in her place and I think because of that she's having connectivity issues. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so we begin class today. Whenever my voice is uh, echoing or you're not able to hear clearly, uh, you can please uh, type in the chat section. Uh, what about the other classes, the previous classes? Uh, is my voice being okay? The sound being fine? The previous classes? All the classes that I've taken so far uh, has it's been okay? Uh, Compared to other teachers, is the quality of the sound in my classes a little poor or is it good? Can we give some feedback, please? Now it's a bit louder, okay. Now is it fine? I think I start speaking a little louder if it comes louder. Now is it fine? And then now is it fine? Okay. 
Thank you. So anytime you are not able to hear, just uh, pause me. Um, you can unmute your mic and say it, or we can just uh, type in the chat section and I will uh, uh, you know, make the changes. Okay. Uh, so in the last class, we were looking at uh, you know the methods a messenger or a teacher should incorporate uh, to effectively communicate the message in a relevant and a productive way to the children. So we look at who a messenger is, uh, the roles, the qualification, or the qualification of the roles of a messenger. And now we are looking at the methods a messenger should use, or a methods the uh, a messenger or a teacher should incorporate uh, to effectively communicate the message in a relevant and a productive way to uh, children. Okay. So the methods we saw was the first one was you know choosing relevant topics uh, for children that you are teaching, uh, as well as uh, preparing a, a good lesson plan. So we went through some of the topics, uh, and we said that uh, when you're choosing a topic, it should be according to their developmental needs of the children in that age group. Uh, we've already uh, looked at in detail the developmental needs of children in various age groups. And I also gave you a sample of one age group and the topics that you could choose, the different narratives from the Bible that you can pick up. Okay. And then we looked at uh, the second method is you need to prepare well. Uh, there is no substitute for a well prepared teacher. Um, and we said that a good rule is to spend no less than uh, four times the length of your teaching time in preparation. That means if you have a 30-minute class, then you have to spend no less than two hours in uh, preparation. And we said that uh, if you're teaching on a Sunday, it's good to prepare uh, a week in advance or maybe the previous Friday, you can start looking at your lesson, thinking about it, or you can start preparing from Monday. So if you're teaching on Sunday, then you can start preparing from uh, Monday. And I mentioned the reasons why we need to do that and how effective your class would be if you prepare in um, advance. I also mentioned uh, the importance of writing down everything that you are going to teach in a 30 minute class. And uh, we looked at the reasons why we need to do that as well. Okay? And then we began looking at uh, how to write a lesson plan uh, and what to think, what are the things that you need to keep in mind even as we write the lesson plan. Uh, the first thing we looked at was the learning objective. Okay, when we looked at what is a learning objective, um, and I gave you a few examples of a few lessons, uh, what the learning objectives uh, can be, and uh, why is it important to, for us to write a learning objective even before we write the uh, lesson. And we said that it's important because we need to choose one main truth, and we have to keep that main truth running throughout the lesson. Uh, children are not like adults. We can't give them three-point sermons, four-point or five-point sermon. Uh, just one main truth uh, and how we can explain that and reiterate that in different ways. Okay. So the first thing when we write a lesson plan is to have a learning objective. The second thing is a recap. That means uh, like what I'm doing exactly now is, uh, you know, uh, recapping what we had uh, learned the previous class, just briefly just mention uh, what the uh, topic was, what the story was, and what they had learned very, very briefly, okay? After recap, what is the next thing that we need to uh, do when we are preparing for a lesson? What is the next heading? The first thing is learning objective. The next is a recap, and after that is what? We looked at it last class. Anyone remembers? Anyone remembers what we learned the last class? After recap?
it's the introduction right remember uh, introduction uh, so you know whether you're preaching or teaching or uh, you're writing an essay or anything uh, we know that introduction is very very important uh, so when you are introducing uh, the lesson that's the most important part of your lesson uh, it's important to begin your lesson well a well begun um, uh, you know lesson is uh, you know when you begin the lesson well uh, it is uh, you know the uh, uh, what you what you're going to accomplish is half done because your introduction has been good that means uh, when you uh, when you begin, you know your work is half done. This is the best place to capture the attention or the interest of the children, and it is the worst place to lose it. Okay, so this is the best place to capture the introduction. Uh, uh, introduction is the best place to capture the attention of the children, uh, and it's uh, also the worst place to lose it. Which means if you don't have a good introduction, a boring introduction, uh, children will not be interested and you will lose their attention. Okay? Um, and we know that once we don't have the children's attention, uh, it's very difficult to teach them anything. So introduction is a good place to establish a point of contact uh, with the children. Uh, talk about something that is which is within their experience. Uh, you know, something that will arouse their curiosity, uh, something with which they can identify with. So your introduction should be basically, uh, you know, something with, uh, you know, they can experience, talk about something that is uh, happening in their life, something that they're experiencing, going through, uh, say something that will arouse their curiosity. They want to know more. Okay, what is this? What is that? What is she going to say? What is she going to do next? Okay, or what is she going to teach us? And something which they can identify. Now, once they have, all of us have our felt needs. So if we are preaching or teaching to meet the felt needs of the people, people will listen. But if you are not uh, teaching or preaching something that is not going to meet or cater to the needs of the people, they will basically not be interested and they will not be, um, they will not listen, okay? So the beginning or the introduction should be a very clear link or connection to what you are going to speak to the rest of the um, lesson. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's of no use if you have an excellent introduction uh, and you know the rest of your lesson does not you know follow the excitement or uh, what you have done in the introduction. So it is the introduction that kind of builds up the excitement builds up the curiosity, but you need to build it up throughout the lesson or throughout what you're preaching or what you are um, teaching, okay? Uh, so you will, um, you know, you need to build up uh, the rest of the lesson as well as good as what you have done in the uh, introduction, okay? Um, you will succeed in getting the attention of the children only when you have a good introduction and uh, when you have a good lesson that is planned, uh, uh, you know, the good lesson that is to follow, okay? Uh, and you will uh, achieve in getting the attention of the children and not losing it. Uh, so make the beginning or make the introduction a stepping stone to the rest of the uh, lesson, okay? But when you're doing the introduction, it's very important to know or to uh, note that you know, you have to keep it very short and simple and brief and to the point. Uh, remember that your introduction is not the whole uh, lesson that you're going to teach. The introduction should be very short and sweet and uh, uh, interesting. And that should build up for the rest of your lesson because you have more contents that you want to communicate or you have the rest of the lesson that it needs to follow when you time for that. So keep the introduction just short and sweet and um, exciting. Okay. Now be careful, don't give away all the secrets in the introduction. Uh, uh, so for example, uh, how can you give up, you know, uh, all the secrets in the beginning, in the introduction, you can start your class by saying, 
Okay, children, today we are going to hear about a man called Jonah who was swallowed by a big fish. Now, children will not be interested to listen to the rest of the your lesson or to what you have to say for the rest of the 30 minutes. Why? Because you have already told the entire what you're going to teach in just 17 words by saying, today we are going to hear about a man called Jonah who was swallowed by a big fish. Now, children will say, oh, I know Jonah's story. Or uh, those who do not know say, okay, you know, this man that was called Jonah, he was swallowed by a big fish. Fine. You know, they would not be interested for what follows. So don't give away all the secrets at the introduction as well. Keep some of the secrets um, and build it up for, uh, you know, for the rest of the uh, lesson that is to follow. Please don't start your introductions like that or like this. Now, uh, now sit up, children, fold your arms. I'm going to teach you about uh, the need to repent or I'm going to teach you about forgiveness or I'm going to teach you about obedience, how you should obey, why we should obey. Now, you know, if children are going to hear all of this, they'll get really bored. Okay? I don't want to hear about repentance, not even about obedience. Uh, how many times we need to hear about forgiveness of sins? It's so boring. Um, so maybe these are things that you want to teach them in your lesson, or this is your objective, but don't share it with them. Keep them kind of wondering what is the lesson all about? Uh, what are you going to teach them? What are you going to tell them? Um, so, you know, if you tell this is, no, no, sit up, fold up your arms, I don't want to fold your hands and sit down, I don't want anyone talking, uh, and I'm going to teach you about uh, forgiveness, or I'm going to teach you about love, I'm going to teach you about obedience, uh, you know, then you will know that, you know, children will totally not be interested if they don't like any of these topics. So don't give away the topics, don't give away what you are saying, uh, to the end, what you will tell them, we want to teach them, or what they have to learn throughout the lesson. Um, just keep it as a curiosity for them to be curious about to know what you are uh, teaching them. Now, in, in how can you have a good introduction? Okay, well, you can start your uh, lesson, uh, the good introduction, by being an attention getter. That means get the attention of the children. So you can have different attention getters. You can have um, objects that you show them. Like last week, I showed you uh, on Friday when I showed you a newspaper, envelope, road map, a telephone or a mobile. And, uh, you know, you can have it in a tray and show it to them. So children who learn by seeing, children who learn by touch, by smell, who learn by interaction, uh, you know, would all be excited. Uh, then you can get them to say, okay, what do you think these items in this tray or this table have in common? Uh, you know, wait for them to respond. Then, you know, you can say all of these things, uh, you know, help us to communicate with each other. Okay. So then uh, you can ask them, what do you think is our topic today? And they'll say communication. Uh, so you can say, okay, let's see if it's communication. So you're kind of getting them to, uh, waiting to know what is the topic, okay? So then you can say, who do you communicate with? And they will say, uh, you know, if some child says communicate with God, then you can start building up or have some questions that will lead up to God. And then you can talk about this lesson. Basically, this is the attention getter for uh, prayer, okay? Prayer is communicating, fellowshipping uh, with God, okay? Or you can even start your introduction with an attention getter by doing, uh, 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 you know, an activity. Uh, you can, I, I also share this activity on Friday. You can have two kids uh, who they don't know each other very well. Get them to sit together and just tell them to get to know each other. Uh, and tell them you're going to give them a couple of minutes and you will get to uh, get to know each other. Don't give them any more instructions. And, uh, you know, just see that they are engaging in that activity. Uh, so they'll be talking, chatting, asking questions. And after they finish, you can ask them, uh, uh, how did you get to know the other person? Okay. So they will say, like, you know, I asked questions, the person answered. 
Um, so you say, okay, did you have to do all the talking or did you have to also uh, listen to what the person said? So they say, yes, you know, they, they had to ask the questions, they also had to listen. Uh, and you can say, you know, uh, so when you communicate, there is a two way process. Communication is a two way process. You not only speak, but you also wait to listen to what the other person has uh, has understood or, this, or how the person is responding to what you have said. And then you can say, okay, last week, what did we learn about? What's our topic? You can say prayer. Does it prayer is communication with God? And then you can say, uh, you know, uh, so how do we communicate with God? Uh, we have to talk. Okay, we tell God everything. So is communication complete with when we only say uh, something or when we listen as well? So you see, so this activity they have learned that communication is not just talking but also listening, and you're also teaching them how important it is to listen to God. Okay, so you can do an activity or you can do a skit. Okay, now the skit, the skit is about a pattern for prayer. Okay, how Jesus taught his disciples to pray, but you're not keep telling them, okay, today we're going to learn about the pattern for prayer. Uh, they'll be pretty bored because, you know, many children are not interested in praying. They find it difficult. Uh, it's not a topic they would be uh, interested in. So you can uh, start off even with a skit, okay? Uh, you can um, speak to two children either the previous Sunday or you can call them up during the week uh, and you can write their dialogues and give it to them. They don't have to, uh, this kid, they don't have to learn to buy hard it uh, because they can just read it out from the paper. So you say, well, now you will have a skit, then you can call two children, call children basically who are interested, who learn through intrapersonal, uh, you know, uh, learning styles. They gifted with interpersonal uh, styles of learning. So you call them and you have them uh, sit in chairs, you know, they're not facing each other backs uh, towards each other. And, um, you know, uh, and you can just introduce them and say, this is, one is Pradeep, one is Sushil. And uh, just listen to Pradeep and Sushil's prayer. Okay, they are praying. Uh, so, then Sushil will just, uh, you know, close his eyes, but he can have his uh, paper there and he can read from the paper it says, Dear God, thank you for my mom, my dad, grandma, grandpa, all my uncles, aunties, and my friends. But, dear God, I love you. Please help me with my exam. Please give me good marks. And Sushil says, thank you for my bed. Thank you for my toys. Thank you for my cycle. And Pradeep says, please help me to play good cricket tomorrow. Please help me to play like uh, Sachin Tendulkar and please give me a century. Sushi, thank you for my food. Though I'm very tired of eating the same rice and dal uh, and would rather have biryani. Thank you for my books. Thank you for my friends. Pradeep, Please give me a new jacket and a new sweater and new shoes. Sushi, thank you for giving me a good day. God, I love you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pradeep, and please help me to sleep well. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. So they just, you know, do it one after the other. Their lines are there, so they know who's speaking next. And then you tag them, get them seated, and then have them seated. And you uh, can say, what kind of prayer these boys or, you know, if they have girls, uh, we're praying and wait for the children to respond. Um, so the children will say, they will just say, thank you prayers, or give me prayers, or help me prayer. Okay, so their prayer was all about, thank you God, help me God, give me this, give me that. Um, and you can ask children, have you ever prayed this kind of prayers? Uh, okay, so... Um, and you think this is how God wants us to pray? This is how we think uh, Jesus taught uh, people to pray? Um, if yes, why? And if no, why? So get the children to talk and uh, discuss. Okay. So here we have had, uh, you know, children learn by seeing the skit, uh, auditory learners, uh, 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 visual learners, the intrapersonal learners who have done it. 
uh, those who like activity, those who like see things, they have uh, learning through this. And so you can say, tell them, and you're teaching them that prayer is not just about thank you, bless me, help me, give me, but it's also more about just this. And then you can teach them the pattern of prayer uh, that Jesus uh, taught his disciples. Okay. So your yeah, attention getter can also be a, um, a spit. Or you can, uh, you know, you can um, teach them about God's word. Uh, you can have, uh, you know, uh, age appropriate books. For example, if you're teaching sixth graders, you can have, um, you know, um, um, uh, books that are appropriate for their age. Then you can get them all on the table or you can just give out the books to them. It can be a history book, physics book, chemistry book, or a story book. Uh, inside to be there or whatever, and you can have a Bible. You can give them all these books and you can say, okay, um, um, ask them what they do with these books. So those children can learn by, uh, you know, by touch, by smell. They can, you know, just, uh, and those who learn by uh, seeing, those who learn by speaking, engaging, moving around, uh, they can all be benefited with this activity. Um, and you can ask them, what books do you have at home? Uh, do they like reading books? Uh, and then you can ask them, uh, okay, what is different about all of these books? Uh, one says a physics book, one says a history book, a chemistry book, uh, and the Bible. How is it different from uh, the other books? Is the Bible different from other books? So then, you know, you talk about how the Bible is God's word. Um, it's God's message to man. Uh, so that is one way that you can use, uh, you know, introduce uh, uh, the topic, um, get their attention by just giving them some books and showing and talking about how different the Bible is compared to the other books. Or you can even have the attention get it as a quiz. Now, for example, you're teaching them about God's word, uh, how many books are there in the Bible? See, and how many uh, uh, the Bible is divided into two main parts. Uh, do you know the name of each of the sections? Uh, how many different people wrote the Bible? How many years was the Bible written? And then you can get them to uh, you know, discuss and start discussing and talking about the Bible from this attention getter. Or you can just play a, a game. Uh, for example, a game like a blind man's talk, like you're uh, talking about uh, uh, party years, so you're talking about faith, and faith is when you can't see, but you just believe. So you can do an uh, activity with them. Uh, you know, basically those who are interpersonal uh, uh, learners, uh, you know, they would be excited, those who like to move around and do things and learn things. Uh, you know, you can get these children, you can just uh, blindfold them and you can tell them you have to walk from this end of the classroom to that end of the classroom and uh, you can get them to see everything and you can say that we will help you, to, uh, you know, not to fall or move or ahead and then you just blindfold them and they will give, all the children can shout out instructions and when they get to the end, uh, previously you would not have placed a chair at the end, okay? Uh, but when you blindfold the child, you place a chair in the end. So when you reach the, the finish line, you can say stop, and then uh, the teacher can say, now sit on the chair. But the child will think, oh, there was no chair at the, the finish line. Uh, so let the child, you know, think what, or decide what the child wants to do. Uh, so the child, teacher can again say, sit on the chair. Um, then the child can say, the child will ask where, or there's no chair here, or can you help me? Uh, it's the teacher will say, sit on the chair. And then, you know, make sure that the chair is right behind the child. Maybe the child can just feel the chair, or uh, and make sure that when the child is sitting on the chair, chair the child is sitting, you know, does not uh, miss the uh, chair and, you know, sit down and can hurt himself or herself. Uh, and just get the child to sit on the chair. Well, the child may say, there's no chair, I don't want to sit. You can leave the child to decide and choose what the child wants to do. But after that, you can say, you know, uh, how did you feel when 
uh, we told you to sit on the chair. Uh, you know, the child is saying, I didn't think there was a chair. Uh, I thought you were just being the fool or, you know, I'm going to fall down or all of those things. And uh, so, uh, but ultimately there was a chair and the child sat, uh, you know, safely. So we can say this is fate. Fate is, you know, we don't see when God tells us to do something. Uh, he knows that there is uh, the chair there. I knew there was a chair there as a teacher. And I knew that uh, I placed it right behind you so that you don't fall down. And I was also there to hold you in case you sit down, you know, to hold you so that you can sit right on the chair. I was there to help you. So you can say that is fate. Fate is you don't see the chair, but you just hear the voices and you believe. And when you act in faith, God is there to help you. Uh, uh, to do what you have to do. Okay, so you can uh, uh, start the attention getters by using all of these methods, using objects, using skits. Uh, you can even use, uh, uh, you know, uh, a quiz or you can, uh, you know, just uh, uh, get them to play a game. And then you can, uh, you know, Get them into the rest of the lessons. So the attention getter should lead to the rest of the lesson. So you can say, okay, you didn't sit on the chair, so what did you experience? What is it called? It's called unbelief. Uh, what is unbelief? What is belief? What is another word for belief? Faith. Uh, so is it difficult for us to have faith when we don't see? Then you can say, okay, let me tell you a uh, 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 a narrative from the Bible that happened to this man called Bartimaeus, what happened, or to the woman with the issue of blood. That way you can uh, build up the whole, the rest of the story or narrative and the learning that you want to bring out. Okay. Then uh, an attention getter could also be an object lesson that uh, you know you could use. Are all of you in class with me? Yes, no? I'm able to follow. There's only four of you, but are all of you in class with me? Are you able to hear me well? Able to follow? Yes, no? Okay. Any Kiran says yes. What about the others? Okay. Uh, so you can use an object lesson and I have been uh, talking about this object lesson from the very beginning when we started class. Uh, what is an object lesson? An object lesson is basically you using any object, okay, any object uh, to illustrate a concept, uh, a point, a truth, a learning of the story uh, by combining it with an object or a trick that you can uh, do using the object and this would be like a very interesting introduction and attention getter. It can also be something that you can use um, uh, as a story to narrate or you can also use it at the end of the lesson uh, to bring about the learning or the teaching and the um, application. Okay. Um, and it would be a good visual aid to help children remember the lesson for the rest of their lives. Now, I know whenever we see objects, whenever we see places, uh, whenever we see things, or, uh, you know, uh, we also always are reminded about what has uh, or we associate that object with something that has happened in the past. Uh, for example, if you wear, uh, you know, you take your handbag and you're going out, uh, you're reminded of the person who gifted you that handbag. Or if you go to a certain place, you're reminded about what happened previously where you, you saw something there or, you know, something sad happened in that place. You're reminded uh, of things that have happened. So objects always remind um, uh, you of uh, things that have happened in the past. Uh, lessons that you have learned, um, things that have happened. Uh, and that is why we see that even Jesus used object lessons. Uh, did Jesus use object lessons when he taught? When he preached? Yes, no? What do you think? Did Jesus use object lessons when he taught the people? 
what is an object lesson? Jesus using uh, an object to illustrate a point, a truth, a concept. Yes, so Jesus used object lessons. Uh, what are some of the objects he used to teach people? Yes, he used parables. Thank you. Yes. So when he's teaching parables, or he says, you know, look at it, uh, uh, you know, the so, uh, a farmer went to sow his seed. So really he was big, and we you know the whole uh, Israelite community, we had a lot of farming that was happening. He's talking about different kinds of soils. They understood the different kinds of soils. He talked about seed. Uh, when he was talking about faith, he said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, uh, you know, there must have been a mustard plants around. He says, you know, if you tell this mountain to go fall into sea, basically, but, uh, Jesus was uh, sitting there and there was the sea, you know, uh, it, in the background, there was the mountains. And so people would, next time they see the sea, they see the mountains, they would remember what Jesus had taught them. They have faith and you can speak to the mountains, you know, it will do what you speak. Or the, anyways, Jesus said, why are you worried? Look at the lilies of the field. Look at the birds of the air, and Jesus said, You're worth more than the sparrows. So there may be sparrows all around. So, you know, Jesus used a lot of uh, uh, object, objects in his teaching, and his objects kind of would have reiterated the truth even after Jesus would have gone back to his father about what he had taught. Now, object lessons is not something that we use only for teaching children. We can use object lessons even when you are preaching. You know, I know a preacher, if you go to YouTube, you will find this preacher. Uh, he's in the US, but uh, in all of his preachings, he uses wonderful object lessons, which kind of gets the attention of the people and some of the very difficult concepts that people try to um, not understand, uh, you can easily, um, uh, you know, explain using object lessons, okay? Uh, so the object lessons can be used as an introduction. It can also reinforce your lesson for the uh, day. Uh, now the object lesson will always attract uh, attention of the people uh, and you can use it to attract their uh, attention and focus the interest of the children on the main truth that you are uh, teaching. Okay, object lessons can also be used at the end of the lesson to uh, kind of remind children again uh, what they have learned, what is the learning, uh, what is their truth. And when they see this, God can at any point in their life, in the, in the way in the future, can use that object to bring about the learning that they had learned. And God can use that object to communicate a truth to them about what they have learned or what they are going through and God can minister to them to that uh, object, okay? So how do you uh, uh, use this object lesson? You first introduce the object, whatever object you have, you show the children or you show the congregation, you introduce the object, then you teach the basic truth using that object and then you connect that truth to the Bible text or to what you are being preaching or uh, teaching, okay? Um, now, let's uh, look at a few object lessons, okay? Uh, for example, uh, you have, uh, you know, just uh, take a couple of balloons to the class and uh, children love balloons, even older people like balloons, so you can just... Uh, uh, show them the balloons, hold up the balloons in your hand and you can ask them, what is this? And, uh, you know, children will uh, say it's balloons. Those of them who learn to touch, see, you can give them or smell and give them the balloons. They can just hold it uh, and play with it. Uh, you can ask them, what is the purpose of these balloons? Uh, so they can say, you know, uh, use it for birthday parties, for any parties, to play games. Uh, just for decoration. So you can say yes when we blow air into it uh, and you can blow air or you can get the children to blow air, those who learn, uh, learn by doing things, they can just blow the air into the balloon and you can say, you know, you can use it for special purposes 
like you know uh, adding beauty uh, or a pastel touch uh, to a space or they can be used for even uh, you know fun games then you can tell them now i decide to have a party uh, with a lot of balloons and so i purchased a pack of balloons to show so then the pack with all the balloons and um, you can tell them that you know you were setting up the whole party getting everything ready instead of blowing the balloons you just drop the balloons in different places you kept them in different places or you put them down in different places uh, around the room okay and when you're, you're doing it you can get one child to just put the balloons in different places uh, you know on different tables or whatever okay then you can ask the children would anyone enjoy uh, the beauty of these balloons if they are just not blown air into and they're just deflated and they're just kept over here like I kept them now uh, the children will say no you know there's no point because the balloons are showing no beauty they're not bringing any beauty to the space that is there around us they're not bringing any festive or exciting uh, touch to the whole occasion okay uh, so uh, there's no joy that we get in a deflated balloon that's not blown with air, okay? So then you can say, you know, this is the same thing in our own lives. Uh, you know, some sometimes we can be like these empty balloons. So then hold up the empty balloons, okay? Uh, but when we receive God's word into our life, and when we obey God's word into our life, then you can blow air into... Um, uh, the balloon or you can get a child to blow it uh, just like the air does to this balloon you know uh, it uh, it brings uh, shape to it it brings life to it it brings uh, excitement uh, it brings joy the same way if god's word fills us we read god's word you know it fills us then our life also will bring joy to others it will bring joy to ourselves it will bring meaning, it will bring purpose to our life. So we're not saying how important this, uh, if you want any children, it's important to read your Bible, pray, read your Bible, pray. But just through this simple thing about a balloon, you can just teach children how uh, our lives can be different when we read God's word, how exciting it will be, how joyous it will be, how much joy we bring and beauty we will add to our surroundings, to people around us. Uh, and how much more meaning and purpose it will bring to our uh, lives, okay? Uh, I'll show you another uh, object lesson. So I have a couple more, uh, okay? Um, then you can just take a hair dryer to class. This is a hair dryer and you can all show them the hair dryer and you can ask them, what is this? And uh, the children will say, hair dryer, if it's too small, they may not know. Then you can say, have you seen your mommies uh, or your older sisters use this uh, hair dryer? Okay, and they'll say yes. Uh, or you can ask them, what is this called a hair dryer? What is it used for for drying hair? So you can say, okay, children, um, my hair is a little wet here and I don't want to get a cold. So I want to dry my hair. So let me uh, just give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to dry my hair. So then you can I'll say, okay, let me put it on. When you put it on, then you dry my, try drying your hair. I say, okay, what's not working? Why is there no noise? Why is uh, my hair not drying? I can't hear any voice. What's wrong, children? Do you know what's wrong? And they'll say, maybe it's not working, uh, you know, or maybe it's spoiled or it's, uh, it's not good condition. But maybe some children will say, ma'am or auntie, you have not plugged in your hair dryer. They say, oh yeah, I have not plugged it in. So then I go to the switch board and I, you know, I plug it in. And then when I put it on, oh wow, it's working now. Okay, now I can dry my hair. Okay, so then uh, you can say, um, you know, um, Uh, that you know only when i plug this into the power source uh you know it's working otherwise this hair dryer is so worthless okay or you can use even your uh, mobile you can say okay uh, let me just uh, i have an important call today uh let me just call the person and you need to make sure that your battery is dead 
So then you can say, okay, you try calling, but uh, you know, oh, this phone doesn't seem to work. Uh, anyone knows why it's not working, then you know, children are smart, they say then it's uh, maybe dead, there's no charge in the battery. So, oh, yeah. So, okay, let me charge it. What do I need to do it? Okay, I need to plug it onto the main source, the power um, source. And then you can say, you know, um, connect these objects to their own life or what they're going to go, go through. So, you can say, you know, uh, uh, we are like this hair dryer. Okay, our lives are like this hair dryer. Uh, on our own, we cannot do anything much. Okay, we cannot do anything much, we cannot fulfill anything much. But when we are connected to the power, the main source, and who is our power? Who is the source where we get everything from? We say God. When we're connected to our main source, when we're connected to God, um, you know, then our lives become useful, our lives uh, become uh, uh, purposeful. Okay. And then you can ask them, so how do we connect to God's power? Uh, do we go and plug ourselves somewhere so that uh, we can get recharged in our bodies? How do we get the strength? How do we get the power? Uh, how do we recharge ourselves? Uh, uh, is it by eating you know, food, natural food? Uh, of course, we get strength in our bodies, but how do we get uh, strength in our minds, in our emotions, in our, uh, in our spirit man? Uh, where do we get this power from? What is the power that, or the source of power that God has given us uh, to strengthen ourselves, to recharge ourselves, to build ourselves up? Uh, and then, you know, we can get them to answer and then we can bring up a Bible and say, you know, it is God's word. God's word is a power source that we need to plug in. So you're teaching them how important the word of God is. And you're telling them how important it is to plug into that and this is where they get their strength, their source, their power, their energy uh, and um, you know, um, and it will just uh, help them to think on those uh, lines. So how can you be connected to God's source of power and live a life of power uh, and you can say, okay, let's discover together. So you don't give them the answer but you can just say, uh, Okay, let's discover together. Then you can teach them about God's word. You can teach them about prayer. Uh, so next time, you know, many years later, if they are not reading their Bible and praying, they're going to difficult times, they're discouraged. Uh, God can speak to them through some power source. You know, they're, some equipment they're using, they're not connected to the power source or the, there's no electricity, there's no power and they realize that they can't do anything. Maybe God can speak to them through that object that the life is also like this uh, unfruitful, no power, no joy, no meaning, uh, no purpose. You're living such a dead life it's because you're not connected to it. Okay. Okay, we'll stop here with this object lesson. I have some more object lessons which I will show you uh, next class uh, on, um, on Friday. Oh, sorry, tomorrow and then uh, we can progress with our lesson plan. Okay. Um, thank you all for joining class. Sorry, I took three minutes of the extra time. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, have a good day and. Uh